it's important that we remember that when we are fact checking, um, when we're verifying things, it's not just about fake news. It's not just about there are dolphins in Venice Canal because the water's cleaner or not. Because a lot of times the information that we're reading has some truth to it. And a lot of times the information, um, it might be angled a certain way because of the motivation of the author. And so when my mom read about um, how masks will poison us, give us CO2 poisoning, some of the information that she was reading about is true. There is a condition where you get too much CO2. And it is true that as we exhale, we exhale CO2. And so there were some truths there. And then she believed everything because she didn't want to wear a mask. John Green says better information not true or false information, but better information leads to better decision-making. So if the more you know about masks and what they do, what they don't do, the advantages, the disadvantages, the best information will lead to the best decision-making. Not that you'll ever know everything. People make mistakes, they learn new things but better information leads to better decision-making. And he says, it leads to a better world. And honestly, I'd like a better world. So, so let's, let's get talking about this. And I've got some examples um, that we're gonna work through in discussion format. And, um, and then I have some things that you're gonna do as a group. Now I wanna review these three questions that John Green says we should ask every time we encounter information on the web. And the more you do it, the more used to it you'll get. The first one is very, very important. Who is behind the information? What do we know about that person? What perspectives do they have? Do they already hold? What is their authority? Now their authority is their expertise, their background, what else they've done. What kind of um, education do they have? What have they worked on? What is their experience? Um, when we think of authority, you might ask a question of, um, who do you want? Um, who do you want your medical care from? Let's say you've got a cold. Do you ask your mom? Do you ask your best friend? Do you ask a doctor? And you see, when I'm naming these things, do you ask the internet? Uh, when I'm naming all these things, you go, well, my mom's had a lot of colds, and she's taken care of me. I've made it all the way to, you know, like if you're 17, 18. 25 years old, your mom, like you survived. So your mom must know something. Um, but let's say you have something that's a little more serious than a cold. Who do you ask? Do you go to your mom? Do you go to a doctor? Your best friend? You want to know that they have some authority, some expertise, some experience. And so we're looking at that. Also, Let's say you go on the web and you find a site and it gives you what seems like really good information, but it turns they just want to sell you some vitamins. And that's where we get to the second question. Why are they sharing the information? What's in it for them? What is their purpose? Everybody has a purpose. Even Nicholas Kristof, when he wrote, now is a time to learn from, his, from Hispanic Americans, his purpose 
was to erode the attitude that many people have about um, Hispanics because people can, have discriminated against Hispanics in the past and they still do. And he wanted to demonstrate that they're not bad. In fact, undocumented immigrants add positive um, elements to our society. And that was his purpose. If you do a little bit of lateral reading on the Hispanic paradox, you'll find that it has very little to do with the reasons he gave to it, you know, like community, family, um, faith, it has very, the experts, the researchers don't ascribe it to that, but Christoph had a purpose. And so that's what he was doing. So who's behind the information? Why are they sharing the information? And third, what types of claims are being made? And are those clap claims backed up by reliable evidence? And what do others say about the claims? And there are a lot of ways to answer these. And so we're gonna focus on another one today, lateral reading, which I'll describe to you. And next week you'll have a prompt and it will, uh, um, you will be doing some lateral reading, some checking, answering these questions no, in an essay format. Uh, jo Joseph, did you have a question? Okay. So, when we're asking these questions, we're asking, can we trust this site? Can we trust this person? Can we, can we trust this organization? And it isn't normally a yes, no, like they have no credibility or they have total credibility. Normally there's a continuum. It's the degree of credibility. How much can we trust them? For example, the information on um, Friendship Springs Eternal, the one about um, the Cherry, Festi Cherry Tree Festival in Washington, DC, was published, paid for by the country of Japan. So they know a lot about the history of Japan. They know a lot about the relationship between Japan and the United States. And so there is a degree of credibility but we also know their purpose is to emphasize that so Americans who read the Washington Post will have a positive feeling about Japan and the relationship about Japan, that they won't be um, concerned about buying things from Japan in, as opposed to things only made in America because they'll say, oh, these are our friends. Um, this is a good thing for us. Um, it's building jobs, Japan brings jobs to America. And so they have a distinct purpose. Does it mean that they lied? No, it just means we have to look a little bit more carefully. And that brings me to the two articles we looked at. Um, one was uh, The Great Transition by Shell Oil, and the other one was an article by Ventikesh Rao, who has a PhD in systems. And he wrote about how, um, I forget the title of this, but it was about the urgency of taking care of climate change now. And Shell Oil says, we've got time, let's wait to adopt alternative sources of fuel until the price comes down because we don't wanna mess up the economy. And the class was mixed. I read all the discussion boards and you all saw that this was a sponsored article, that it was an ad, but it was about half and half. Um, it's not a difference between true and false. Which one has, which, which article might be tempted well, what is the purpose of Shell Oil in posting an ad? How 
Um, you can put it in the chat or you can um, just call it out. Ezekiel? I'm guessing that they're gonna be trying to promote using fossil fuels, but at the same time, trying to make it sound like them as a business who was using fossil fuels is actually trying to be sustainable, even though it is affecting the environment. Yeah, they make billions of dollars every year off of extracting, producing, selling fossil fuels. They have an incentive to get us to say, oh, we've got time, it's okay. We're going to do this and Shell Oil cares about us and cares about the planet so we can trust them. And so they have, they, it's not like they lied. The information they provided was relatively accurate. They just took away some, their information was misleading. So we have this, these two words, misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation is giving false or misleading information with no motive, you know, like it, it's regardless of motive. Disinformation is providing that with a motive. Now, disinformation seems like it would be really bad. It would be intentional lies. Um, We'll decide whether Shell Oil is giving misinformation or disinformation. Does Ventikesh Rao have an incentive? Well, he definitely has an opinion. He's very, very, he's adamantly opposed to using fossil fuels any longer than we have to because he says it's destroying our planet. So he definitely has a bias. Is bias bad? Because we all have biases but hopefully we have made our decisions, drawn our opinions from valid sources. And so it's not so much as a bias as an informed perspective. And that's what we're looking at. So we wanna ask um, who's behind the information? What is their motive? And Ads can be disguised to look like news or entertainment. And we definitely saw that in Friendship Springs Eternal and The Great Transition. Because they look like news. They read like news. They're well-written, easy to follow, even interesting if you're interested in those topics. And as we read, we might forget somebody paid for this. They paid for this. They have a reason for paying for it. What's their motive? Now, it's not always that easy to find these things. Sometimes we have to do a lot of checking. There isn't a little sponsored by at the top of the page. And so we have to really look hard. A lot of times we will see things in our socials. And we trust the person it came from, just as I trusted my friend who posted about the dolphins and the swans and the Venice Canal until I double checked. And I generally trusted my other friend who posted um, that thing about Trump um, having hundreds of governors contact him. It's the only thing, that one, I, I actually did believe the one about the dolphins initially, but the one about hundreds of governors, I thought, no, no, he would not say that. I also didn't, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but so we, we wanna think about who it came from, but even if it came from a friend that we trust, a friend that we think is gonna double check things before, um, sharing them. We should probably think about it. Now, here's an article you're looking at. FBI agent suspected in Hillary email leaks found dead in apparent murder-suicide. Whoa, that seems scary. It looks like a headline from a newspaper. And um, 
did Hillary Clinton kill the FBI agent? Was, you know, like what happened? And so what should we think about first when we see something like this in our socials? What are some things we should think about? Go ahead and post it in the chat. What are things we should think about? Who shared it? Yeah, definitely. Um, who published it? Yeah, definitely. What's the motive of the article? Yeah, um, good job, all of you. So here, if I um, if I lit, clip, this is the article, and it's from a web archive. I assume this is. My internet's running a little bit slow today. I probably needed to reboot my computer, but I didn't have time. So it came from the Denver Guardian. And so we should think about what is the Denver Guardian? Um, oh yeah, here's the article. I had to find it from the web archive. So it's gonna look a little funky. This is. Um, the Wayback Machine, where you can look at web pages. And it's still loading. Makes sense that the Wayback Machine wouldn't have anything. Let's find out what we can about the Denver Guardian. And so I'm going to type this in. And I'm going to put quotation marks around the name of the newspaper. And the reason why I do that is because if I put quotation marks around a phrase when I'm searching, it looks for that all together. So I'll click on that and see what I can find about, about the Denver Guardian. And so here are, here's Wikipedia. Oh, Wikipedia says the Denver Guardian was a fake news website known for a popular untrue story about Hillary Clinton posted on November 5th, 2016, three days before the election. And it alleged that the FBI agent Clinton um, investigating Clinton had been found dead. And yeah, it got 15 and a half million impressions. That's a lot. Um, let's go back. Um, on November 5th, the same thing this came out, the Denver Post, I actually know the Denver Post because once in upon a time, I delivered the Denver Post when I was um, 14 and 15 years old. And in order to see it, I have to accept cookies. I accept cookies. And um, there's no such thing. The Denver Post, which I know personally to be a trustworthy newspaper, says there's no such thing as the Denver Guardian. Okay, and oh, there was another one too. But let's, let's go back to the Wayback Machine. And here it is. Um, it never did load fully. So we're just going to turn that off. But if we went to any of these links, we would just, uh, yeah, here we go. Anything there? It turned out there was nothing at any of those links. So, um, so when we see something, instead of believing it right away, we should find out who published it. What do we know about them? What do we know about their motive? And by entering the publisher, because there's no there's no author named there, but by entering in the publisher, 
we can easily see that this is a fake news site. Um, so we can look on Wikipedia, we can look on Snopes, which is a fact checking site. Um, and, oh yeah, fake news, totally false. And it's a hastily thrown together website with a bunch of non-working links and a fake street address. I'm pretty sure people in Denver wouldn't fall for this, but if you haven't guessed, I actually was from Denver. Come on. All right. What we were doing, um, looking at different websites, is known as lateral reading. Sometimes we need to get off the website that we're reading in order to find out who is about the information, who is behind that information. So here's some more social media. This is a tweet, um, GOP teens. And uh, retweet if you walked out because there weren't enough guns at school. And so this was about some kids who were marching because they didn't feel safe going to school. And this, I think this was after the Parkland shooting. And um, so let's go to the actual Twitter feed and not just a picture of it. What does GOP stand for? Any of you know? So there's Grand a Old Party. Yeah, Grand Old Party, Esteban. Thank you. Yeah, and, and who is the Grand Old Party? The Republican Party. Yeah. And so these would be teens who, um, you know, like you can't register to vote if you're 16 years old, um, but you can stand for an organization or stand with an organization. And it appears that GOP teens is a group of teenagers who stand with the organization. That makes sense. Um, are any of you familiar with GOP teens? Already? Okay, so none of you have seen this, but let's see what we can find out. Now I'm going to type in Twitter. Oh, let me go back to that website. Uh, come on. Um, one thing we can do if we want to find out about the organization, we can put our cursor over the Twitter address. We see that there are, oh my gosh, 7,000 people following, um, 60,000 followers. Um, if we click on it, we'll go to the Twitter page itself and um, we can read all about that. And um, we notice that they're selling some things. Um, that's staying on the site. But we wanted to use lateral reading. GOP Teams Twitter. And so we do see that. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, we can read a little bit about it um, from the Atlantic. GOP teens and salon.com are the future of political satire. In this era of never ending gridlock, it may seem like Republicans can find no common ground, but there's at least one thing we can still agree on. It's fun to anonymously poke fun of each other on the internet. And that's the first account at GOP Teens does a good job of skewering the Holloway politicians try to appeal to young people. 
Its tweets, which are adorned with a logo of the Republican Party wearing aviator shades, are littered with extraneous hashtags and buzzwords. Okay. Um, here's another one that says it's a comedy gold mine. Is it satire on Reddit? And if we go down a little bit more, we find out that Daniel Jordan Kibblesmith is an American writer and comedian who's written for television comic books. And he actually created GOP teams. Um, it's a parody site. And we see that that's where that's from. I know, who knew you could check these things? So we can find out more about an organization and we can find out how trustworthy they are. Kibble Smith may be funny to some people, but he, um, he may be funny to some people, but uh, he's a comedian, so. All right, so I'm gonna put you in your groups and I'm gonna ask you to take a look at this tweet and do some lateral reading to um, just to see how true this actually is. Um, what? Okay. Let me share this link with you. Uh, let me change the link so anybody can read it. Questions about what we're doing right now with lateral reading. So I just sent you <clears throat> in the chat a link to um, the slide deck because I want you to take a look at that next tweet and do a little bit of lateral reading in groups to decide how true is this? Can you trust the person who made it? Where's it from? What's their authority? Why are they posting it? Okay. Again, it's about gun control. All right. Let me put you into groups. There. Three participants per room. And there you go. You get about five minutes to figure this out and then we'll come back and talk. Oh, where are we gonna type that? Are we just gonna present it? Don't type it? anything, we'll just talk about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Okay, let me um, share the screen with the Twitter. So this is the Twitter site. 
Um, group one, what did you learn about who made this tweet? The um, person who made the tweet is a uh, writer for The Guardian. And um, group two, what do you know about The Guardian? Uh, was I group two? I didn't catch what group I was in. Um, I don't know if you were group two. Okay. Uh, let me find out. Um, <laughs> or, or just go ahead. What do you know about, um, you actually were not group two, but it's okay. Uh, what do you okay. know about The Guardian? Um, personally, I don't know too much, but it, I clicked on the, the Twitter link to The Guardian. It says it's, you know, it's a news um uh, site and it has um it's like opinion based i guess that's what i saw from it but i didn't get to do too much digging um yeah uh, so um she's a senior reporter for the guardian us and we can we can look up um we can look here and we'll see her here and um we can actually get off the site uh, um, Brian posted this on here again. I don't want to donate, but we can look. Oh, there she is on the Guardian site, and we know this is the Guardian site. Here are all the articles she's written. And so we know that she, <coughs> that this isn't a parody site. Um, we know. We can find out about The Guardian by going, um, we can type in The Guardian. Did anybody do this to learn about The Guardian? Because we wanna know what it is. Um, their site says it's a British daily newspaper. There's also a Guardian US and We wanna know about them so we can go to Wikipedia and we can read about it. Um, we might wanna see The Guardian, The Gar Guardian US. And then we can see it's a New York based newspaper and it tends to have a left of center political step, stance. So we can expect it to um, a, you know, like be in favor of gun control. And so, so Lois Beckett in posting, um, in posting that, uh, let me get back to my slideshow. Oh, here it is. In posting that, we would expect her to be in favor of gun control and to post protests of... Having a hard time. Sorry, I, um, I need to get to this. There's a little thing up at the top of my page that, never mind, it's a hard thing to explain. So I'm going to ask you to take a look at an article on the web. It's called Denmark's Dollar Forty One Menu, and um, I want you to examine the article. Um, there's a slide with a link to it. It's from an organization called minimumwage.com. And so as a group, I want you to skim the article and just kind of get the main point. And then I want you to copy, I want you to find out who's behind the information. What do you know about them? And so just like we had to find out 
who was Lois Beckett. We had found out she was a reporter for The Guardian. We also had to find out what is The Guardian? So you might have to go a few layers back. So, and then think, why are they sharing that information? What perspectives do they hold? Now, I will want you to copy paste the URL on your group slide. So every group has a slide. So th this has the link to the article. And then I just want you to give me the URLs that give you the answer because I want you to be able to track, here's what I looked at, here's what I learned, here's how I came to conclusion. Questions about what you're gonna do? So basically we're just, what like if we, were, we looked up you on Wikipedia information about that site or whatever, whatever information, it's like a works cited page basically, right? And we just put the link? Yeah. Put okay. that, copy paste the URL onto your group slide. All right. Yeah. And then we'll come back. So I'm gonna give you a little bit longer for this, um, maybe six or seven minutes, and then we'll come back and talk about it. And breakout rooms. So it's the same slide deck as before. Okay, let's take a look at what you found out. Now group five said there, we can't find background information about the author because the author's name isn't given. So we can't see the author, the authority of the author. And that is really, really true. So what do you do if you can't find the authority of the author. Um, group four, what did you do? Group four? I think I didn't share, sorry. I never shared the screen. Share. All right, now you can see everything. So group four, what do you do? Tell me what you were doing to find out what you, um, this would be Brian or Nidia. Well, they went to minimum wage about and they learned. Um, okay, so we looked on the same page, the about us. Um, yeah, so that is staying on the website and that's good to learn about um, who sponsored them, but what would be the next step in that? Ezekiel? The next step would be to check uh, additional sources to see or additional sites to see what they, how they view the website or what it, um, to see if the evidence that they might be giving is um, trustworthy or not, because um, sometimes we can have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, if we look at Wikipedia, we learn that, um, why didn't it go to the link? Okay, group three is still typing. Um, go here. Okay, so let's go to the Wikipedia page for this. And here we find out who the Employment Policies Institute is. It's a fiscally conservative 
nonprofit think tank that publishes research on employment issues, particularly aimed at reducing the minimum wage. And so the goal is to, um, the goal is, to, I mean, we know that it's the Employment Policies Institute and we can find out who the Employment Policies Institute is. And we see that their perspective is to lower the minimum wage. And so we see that they have a really strong perspective there. And, um, they and the article claims that raising the minimum wage would lead to higher prices and fewer job opportunities. Uh, and they provide links from the New York Times. So we would want to, if we were doing more work, we would want to find out um, more about who they are, um, what their background is. We would want to start examining those claims. But it's important for us to know it's not just a great website. Um, I actually was able to find out a minute about minimumwage.com. Let me show you one more thing before we wrap up. Um, I went to, I put minimum wage.com in quotation marks, because I had a hard time finding about them also. And then I looked on Wikipedia and I could find out that here's their perspective. And I found some discussion on it on Reddit. And And so here is on SourceWatch. Source um, it's a French group operated by Berman and Company, which operates a network of dozens of front groups um, that counteract minimum wage campaigns, keep wages low, block legislation. And so I can learn about who they are. Of course, if I were doing this, I would wanna know more about the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, um, as well as the Center for Media and Democracy, which is source work. And we have to think about what do other people say about them? And so I can go on Reddit and participate in the discussion and critiques on the discussion and sources on those. But I want you to notice that the way I did that is I put the website in quotation marks. And then um, let me see if I take out Wikipedia what I get. I still get those things. I just have to go a little farther down. Questions. This is what you're doing this week. There's an exercise that asks you to look at an article the, on the Odyssey. And it is also about minimum wage. And so I want you to take a look at that and you're gonna do some um, checking. You're also, Green tells us we can use Wikipedia. So I on your discussion board, I want you to do some lateral reading on Wikipedia. Find out who's behind Wikipedia. What are others saying about Wikipedia? And then share that. Because Green's, just because Green's saying to use it and that it's good doesn't mean it necessarily is. So any questions before we end the session? All right, I'm going to stop the recording.